Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. In the previous jail tutorial, we set it up so you could escape from one of the jail cells just by opening the door because a guard forgot to lock it. However, in this episode, now that I have a patrol system set up, I thought this would be a great time to have a guard patrolling randomly up and down around these and then going inside these jail cells where you have a limited opportunity to try and steal the key from him. I think it'll be a great little escape tactic, so let's get started. So one thing you might notice is I am still building the world up and there's lots changed to it, including the jail. It now has this big roof thing on it, which makes it look so much better than having this nothing up there. And one other thing you'll notice that for a future video, I've made one of the jail cells bigger. So we do have these random cages here, like so, but I do now also have a full body cage here. And I figured it'd be a great way for us to have a trap door or something so you can escape out however you want to. So not much has changed in that regard. So the first thing we need to do is let's actually see set up the patrolling guard to just basically move backwards and forwards down here. The key thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure he goes in each of the cells inside here because you'll see in here we need to have enough room that we can steal it from him if he comes up. I'm thinking if he walks up to here maybe waits for a moment then walks out again and then we'll have to do it in all three rooms which is totally fine. Maybe in the future we can look at making it so he only walks into your cell but I think if you're in prison the waiting will be a bit tense so it could be cool. So to start let's start building up the patrol one. I'm thinking we'll start the patrol point from here and it'll go up into there, out, back into there, out, back into there, maybe even walk past this one for later when we do that one. You can circle round a bit, maybe even make him wait here for a minute, walk back over and then the loop can be complete. So if you have been watching my AI series, we have added a editor script to make it easier. Let's open this up. There we go. So I'll just drag this over here because we don't really need it anywhere specific. And I'll add my first patrol point in to about there and make sure it's rotating roughly the right direction. So all I have to do is click add next patrol point and it sets absolutely everything up for me so you can see everything's linked up correctly like so. so i'll grab this one i'll add another one which i can drag out of here up there the visualizers might not look fantastic but for the sake of the game it will work we'll rotate this one drop it inside there just so the player has an opportunity to go and actually steal the key from him because all i'm thinking is we'll just make the key uh, very visible on the character and we'll just have to pick it up so that's the patrol points all set up you can see now i'll just walk into here or walk down to here, back into there, down here, and it'll just zigzag inside it. It'll come across here, it'll stand here. We could eventually make him go and sit down and stuff like that. Then he'll come back and rejoin the patrol like that. So I'm going to go and find one of my NPCs now and we'll drop him in and that can be the guard who's patrolling. There'll always be a guard patrolling, I think. There we go. So we'll drop him say, here and we'll tell him to patrol this one here and he'll loop forwards. Yeah, he'll just basically walk in the same loop over and over again. But if I try it now and with that, you can see the guard will succeed successfully patrol the area that we highlighted. We'll walk into each room, out the door, and go where he needs to. So you'll see it go into each room, and then he'll do exactly what we told him to. He'll circle back around and start again. There you go. You can see he is now walking back to the beginning to continue his patrol point again. So what I'm thinking is if we're in a cage, like in here or something, they were here, when he comes back in here, it will have a key on him. And if we press it just at the right time, we'll be able to take the key, and then that will be that will unlock our jail cell and let us out, which I think will be a pretty cool effect. So now let's make the actual key that he's going to be carrying with him and then we'll move on to making the interaction. I'm going to come into my blueprints folder and I've got a folder called items where I just store misc items. Now depending on how your inventory or your item system works you'll need to basically create an item to house the key's details. I'm going to be using narrative inventory here which comes with the narrative items built into it. If you've used my previous inventory tutorial then just create an item to have the key into it. For me, I'm going to right click narrative, narrative items, and I will do a narrative item, just a standard one. I will call it ni for narrative item underscore jail key. I'll open this up and I'll just populate it with some default details. So the display now, I will call jail key, the description, a key that unlocks jail cells. The weight, I'll say it's nothing, it's key, it's not going to be worth a lot. And I know games like Skyrim don't put a weight on keys. Quantity, I'll set to one. Base value, I'll get to that eventually. And the action text is used, yes. So that's all good on for me. 
me. I'm going to save it and we need to find a pickup mesh for it. We don't necessarily need it, but we do need to find if we've got a key or not. So let's come and have a look what assets I've got. So I do actually have a bunch of different keys from the Fantasy Kingdom pack. So we'll just drag this key out here. Uh, yeah, that, it looks like a key. That's the important thing. So now that we have the key, I, I want a big silver key actually. That's actually stereotypical jail keys. I'll assign the static mesh to here so it's a pickup. I'm not going to worry about the thumbnail for now. That's just how you actually display it in the inventory. So now that I have our key item, I can actually create the pickup for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click blueprint class. I'll set it to a type of actor and I'll call it BP underscore jail key pickup. And I'm not using my abstract class for it because this abstract class by default has rotating movement. It has a trigger on it and all that stuff. I don't want it to work this way for the jail key. I want the jail key to be different. I want it to be static because it'll be equipped to the enemy and I want you to have to interact with it to pick it up. So inside here, I'll just add a static mesh and I'll place our key onto it. I'll search for key. And then some other bits I will do is I'll just come off and turn navigation off because we don't need that on. And I'll also find the collision settings. And I'm actually just going to disable all of the collision on this one like so because we don't want it on here. I want to give it a bigger collision radius. So I'm going to actually come and add a box collision and I'm going to make it just as wide as I think the player needs to actually be able to see it because I don't want the player to have to just click the guard's head and they get it. But equally, I don't want them to have to hunt around and get the pixel level ready of it. So I think something like that, hanging off the side of the guard, let's give it a little try. So on the guard here, I'll just fit this just roughly to his side. So if I just drag this inside to the guard here and just zero, zero it, drag it off to his side very roughly like it would be, you can see I rotate it. It's pretty much giving the player a much bigger area to be able to capture that key. So it means they stand a greater chance. You could always reduce this if you want your game to be harder. But for me, the guard's going to walk in, you capture the key, you know, you go from there. Let's delete that off. So now that I've got this key here, we actually need a way to add this to our inventory when we pick it up. Again, depending what inventory or item system you're using, this could differ for you. For me, I created the narrative item jail key here. I'm actually going to come and add a variable for this. So I'll just call it narrative item and I'll set it to a type of narrative item and it will be a class reference. I'll make it instance editable if we need to change it. By default, I'll just set this to our jail key. And then this is the part where we actually need to interact with the box and then add it to the player's inventory. If you have an interaction system, I'm going to use narrative interaction. If you have your own or you've used the one from my previous tutorial, just add your interface and do all the bits you need. And I'm going to come into my blueprint narrative interactions folder and I'm going to create my own interactable for it. So I'm going to right click blueprint class, all classes, and let's search for narrative interaction. If you've got your own interaction system, you will not have to do this. So that's okay. And in here, I'll call it interactable item pickup. And I'll open this up. I will come and override the on interact function here and I'll get the interaction comp and from here I will do get owner which gets the owner of the component so that will be this jail key here then we need a way to actually get this narrative item so we can add it straight to my inventory so for this I am going to come and create an interface to handle this so I'll create a new folder inside here called interactions and I'll right click blueprint blueprint interface and I'll call it bpi underscore item pickup I'll open this up I'll simply name the function get item which will have an output of the narrative item so the data type will be the narrative item class just like so i'll compile and save i can then add this interface to my jail pickup like so i can implement this interface just by double clicking it and i can simply return the item if you don't know why we're doing the interface it does save on memory because otherwise we'd have to cast in here to our bp jail item key meaning whenever one of these is loaded the other one is always in memory and that's not something we might want whereas now with an interface all it does is load the singular function it's a lot more efficient so from the get owner i can now do get item from the bpi item pickup we've just created and then finally from the interactor i can do get inventory component and then try add item from class so this is how we're going to handle picking the key up i'll connect the item here across the quantity i'm going to ignore i'm just going to set to one and if the narrative item wants to overwrite it it can and then the add result here i'm going to do a break on it and if the error text is empty meaning there's been no errors you're not full on inventory or you don't have enough to pick this up or whatever like that and from that we will get the owner and simply call destroy actor so we destroy the key once we've it up because you don't want it to remain there and you keep it up with a little bit of tidying we can make it look a lot neater there we go so this interaction when we interact with it we'll get the item from the owner it will try to add it to the inventory if it succeeds then it'll destroy it otherwise it won't do anything i will just add a print statement down here just in case saying error cannot pick up item and the last thing i'll make sure i do is just make sure we disconnect the interactive comp and the owner the interaction comp is the interaction from the player not the actual component just do get owner to get your item then add that to your inventory and 
now we can compile and save. And now if we drop this interactable onto our character, item pickup, we can now reset the text. So we'll say jail key. The action text will be take. And now let's just drop this key in the world. And let's just test if I can actually pick it up before anything happens. Because the last thing we want is to be adding it to the guard and we can't pick it up because we've made a mistake in there. Now you can see as the guard walks around, the key is right here. We can pick it up and it will be added to our inventory ready to use. Awesome. So now that we have a working key, we need a way to actually equip it to the side of this character here. We could also randomize the side if you want, but I'm thinking he'll always walk in forwards and he'll always turn around. So you pretty much, you can get away with putting it either side. But I'm going to come and open this character up and let's take a look at him. Now he does actually have a right and a left weapon, which are bound to his hands. So that's so we can carry things. But he's got no hidden sides where we can do it. So I'm going to come and open up his static mesh. And you can see the weapons are in his hands for if he wants spears, which is something I've done off screen anyway. But we need to be able to equip it either to his side, his back, or the other side, depending on what you want. So I'm just going to equip it to his right side here. So what I'm going to do is find the closest bone to what looks like it'll work. So it's probably actually going to be the pelvis here. And then I'm going to right click on the pelvis and I will do add socket. This pelvis socket I will rename to socket underscore right equip. And then I'll just move it so it is at the side just like so. And while I'm here I'll also right click on pelvis and I'll add another socket just while we're here and I'll call it socket left equip. And I'll just drag this out to the left side. So now we've got a right and a left so we can really take our pick to what we want. And what this now lets us do is if I come and edit his parent blueprint because all of my actors use the same skeletal mesh. I can duplicate one of these items or just add a basic static mesh in just like so. And I'll call it right pelvis equip and I will attach this to the socket right equip. And I'll just make sure it's set to 000 which it is. I'll duplicate this and do the same for the left and then I'll make sure the socket is set accordingly. And now what this means is if we ever have it so the characters can put their swords away or we need to attach a key to it we can just simply set these static meshes here if I set this one to a sword it needs a bit of finesse and a bit of rotating but it does successfully mean we can add it wherever we want so if we add our key to it and test this it definitely needs rotating to match the key's native position we open up the skeletal mesh again and let's take a look basically rotating upwards 90 degrees so if we grab this right one and rotate it upwards about 90 and we'll do the same for the left one save it if we check again now you can see that it has successfully rotated it's not the right way so let's just play around with it until we get what we want there so the key is now successfully there i might even move it out just a little bit more just so it's got a little bit more room to basically sit so it's not going inside clothing there so they're now carrying a key you could get extremely accurate with it balance it against the clothes my game's fairly cartoony so if it's floating it's completely fine i'm going to remove this static mesh from it just so it's not interfering with anything and now back on our npc guard we now have a place to plot the key so they can pick it up so let's go and create our interaction to actually spawn the key lock our jail cell and attach the key to the guard so i'm going to delete this key off because we don't need it now and i'm going to come into our jail cells escape techniques and we've got this bp jail escape key blueprint here so i'm going to right click blueprint class i'll call it i'll click jail and i'll call it bp underscore jail escape underscore steel guard key and i'll open this up so to create an escape technique all we do is apply an interface to it which will be our jail escape interface and it gives us a simple interface of setup escape where we can code basically everything we need it to do so let's break this down what do we need to do to make this work we need to find the guard and we need to give him a key that's step one step two is we need to actually lock our cell and then step three is to make our cell unlock with the guards key so how do we go about finding the correct guard and now i am going to simply make it easy and give him a specific tag of jail guard in the future we are going to create a jail guard manager system where it states that this big building is a jail this guard is a jail guard and that allows us to know when we've left the jail or when we've gone inside the jail we can have guards on different rotors you can have multiple guards for now i'm just going to do it simple just to keep the escape technique simple so in our escape here i'm just going to drag off and do get all actors of class with tag the actor class will be our bp npc which is my generic npc the tag will be jail guard i'll loop over all the actors because it might be that you have multiple keys you can steal and then from here we can now spawn our key so we'll comment this one to get the guard so that's step one step two is to spawn our key so let's drag off the loop body and do spawn actor from class the class will be our jail key pickup the spawn transform i'm actually going to right click and choose split struct the spawn location rotation and scale i'm going to all leave as default i'll set the collision handling to always spawn ignore collisions because when it spawns it's going to collide with the guard that's okay let it do it and what i'm going to do is drag off from this array element and i'm actually going to choose attach actor to actor like so the target 
target we're trying to attach is our key. The parent is the guard from the array element. The socket name is whichever socket you wanted to attach it to. So because we've done two and I want it to randomize, I'm actually going to drag off this socket name and do select. And then in option one, let's find the name of our socket. So it is socket left equip. And you don't need to worry about translating this because the user will never ever see the names of sockets. So you're okay. So we'll put the two sockets in there. Then I'm going to right click and do random bool and then connect it into here like so. If you've got more than three locations, just do a random integer which goes between them all. So if you've got one on the back, or one in his hands or something like that. So this will come and randomize which socket we attach it to and attach it like so. So that's step two done. And I'm gonna comment it saying attach key to guard. Step three was for us to lock our jail cell so we can't escape it. Well, by default, our jail cell is indeed locked, but it won't hurt to force it to be locked just in case of a glitch. So you'll see we've got a lot of stuff where we need to drag it across and you know I'm not a fan of that. So what I'm gonna do is come and promote this jail cell to a variable just for now. Well, jail cell, that's fine. I'll connect it all up. Then over here, I'm going to drag the jail cell off and I'll just set unlock status and I'll make sure it's not unlocked so it's definitely locked and I'll wrap this in a common lock jail. Now we need to actually tell our jail that you can't unlock it unless you have key. So back on our jail cell here if we open this up in here the way we interact with this is by this new interactable we created in the previous tutorial and if you've got your own interact function you'll have that as well. If I edit this here you'll see the only way we can interact with it is if it's unlocked like so. However we need to adapt to this now and say it has to be unlocked or if you've got the key you can circumvent that and unlock it automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and create a new variable called requires jail key and I'll just set it as a boolean and I'll make sure it's instance editable. By default our ticket is true all the jail cells require a jail key to unlock and now what we can do is start altering our logic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this return node away and I'm going to add a branch in between here and then I'm going to drag our requires jail key down and drag off of this and do and. So I'm going to drag off our interactor here, which is where our player comes from, because that's the one who will be interacting with it. Otherwise, it might be an NPC. And I'm going to get the inventory from it. And then I'm going to drag off and check if they have an item. The item class I'm going to check for is the jail key, the quantity of one, and I'm going to ignore visibility. And I'll connect this up to here. If you have an inventory system, it must have an has item check. If it doesn't, return your inventory system. You, you need some sort of way to check if you contain an item in your inventory. I have unfortunately seen some in the past, which don't let you check if you have an item in the inventory. Just find another one or build it yourself either way. So if it requires a jail key and we have the jail key, then we know we are able to unlock the door. So if it's unlocked, and I'll drag this down and do a not boolean, and I'll connect these two together with another and like so. So if it's locked and we have the jail key, then we know we can successfully unlock the jail. And I'm going to say if the jail cell is unlocked true, then we can just connect it to a return node returning true. Door is unlocked. So that's if they forgot to lock the jail cell or you've already unlocked it previously. If it's false, then that means it's locked currently. So then we can check whether it requires a jail key or not with another branch. If it requires a jail key and we have the component, then we can just unlock the jail cell like so. Door is now unlocked. However, if we don't have the jail key or it doesn't require a jail cell, then we can successfully continue to lock it by saying the door is locked and we'll make sure we untick. Now I know that's a bit confusing, so let's run through it one more time. Firstly, we come in and we say, is the jail cell open? If it is, then we just come up here. It shouldn't be checking if we can or not. It already is open. However, if it's not open, it means it's closed. We then check, is it locked? If it's unlocked, then the door's unlocked. We can just go straight away with it. However, if it's locked, then we check, does it require a jail key? And does the player own the jail key? If they do, then it will now unlock the jail cell, which is perfect. However, if it's not, then it will continue to keep the door as locked. The next change we need to make is on the actual interact function. So this is the one where it actually opens it. So all I'm going to do is come across and say, if the door's open, close the door because we're reversing it. If it's unlocked, open the door. However, if it's locked and it requires a jail key, then if it's true, then I'm going to get the player pawn. And from here, I'm going to get their inventory. And then I'm going to remove an item from the inventory. And I'm going to connect this up to our true because it requires a jail cell key and we need to remove it. The item, I will drag off and I will do construct object from class. I'll set the class to be our jail key, which is there. And I'll connect this to the narrative item here. Then if 
if I connect this construct up to the true, reposition everything so it looks a little bit nicer. There we go. So now we come in. Is the door open? Close the door. Otherwise, is it unlocked? Open the door. If it's not locked and we require a jail key, then spawn the jail key because we know we've already got it at this point and then remove the item. Else, then we'll just not do anything because the jail's locked and we don't own the key. So that's fine. So now that we've removed the item from the inventory, what we need to do next is actually open the door. They've got the key. They can now open the door. So we'll just copy the open door and paste it over here like that. In theory, we should probably check if the return value is true because if it's not true for whatever reason, it means something's gone wrong. It can't remove it from the inventory. It, it's a locked item, maybe something like that. So if it's true, we can remove it. If it's false, we'll print out an error saying we can't remove it just in case. So now we have our interactable door on our jail cell set up. We have our escape technique. Let's actually add the escape technique to the data table. So if you open up your content drawer and we'll go into our blueprints data table jail cells and we'll open up our jail technique, we'll add a new row just below this and I'll just add our new escape technique. So we want steel guard key. I'll also name the row here so it's a bit easier to follow. So I'll call it steel guard key and I'll just call the top one door left unlocked just so we can see it a bit easier. Then back on our jail cell where we add an escape technique to it. I'm just temporarily going to disconnect the random and I'm going to add the steel guard key. So it automatically always picks that one when we get sent to jail. So now I'm going to come back into the game. We'll press the P key and hopefully be sent to jail. So now we're in the game. We can see the guard is successfully running around. If I press the P key, we get sent to jail. Here we are. The door is indeed locked. So eventually when the guard comes in, we hopefully should see him have a key. My game is lagging. I don't know why it's decided to now build shaders. So we'll just press F8 to just jump out into debug mode. And let's go and see if this guard actually has a key. Where is he? Does he have a key? Yeah, okay, I can't see one. So let's just pause the game. Let's take a look at him. So he does indeed have a key. It's inside his body, which is, you know, perfect. But he does at least have a key. So we need to figure out why it's inside the body. So if we take a look at the Jail Escape Steel Guard's key where we spawn it. So we spawn it at 000. Then we equip it for the guard and we've set everything to keep relative. So the reason this is not actually equipping to the actor properly and instead going in the middle is we're trying to attach actor to an actor which is the key to the guard here but this guard doesn't have the socket on it the guard's mesh has the socket on it so we're trying to apply it to this npc guard here that doesn't have a socket we need to apply it to the mesh so instead we're going to delete attach actor to actor and we're going to drag off the array element and instead we're going to do attach actor to component so we're attaching our key actor to a component of what we want which will be dragging from from this array element and doing get mesh and we want one right at the bottom get mesh and we will plug the mesh into the parent and then the target we will disconnect and connect to our key like so we'll make sure that we connect up our socket names and we'll just keep everything as is and then connect this over here so now instead of attaching the key to the actual parent here we're attaching it directly to the mesh where it can find socket so let's give it a go let's click play and see how we do now so now we're in the prison if we press the p key we will be teleported into jail the door is locked and the guard is just walking back to the beginning we can see on the compass whether we want to keep the compass there or deactivate it I'm not sure it is now coming in so hopefully we will be able to see the key as you can't know he's in other jail cell then so we should be able to see him walk in and he has the key he didn't walk in far enough though so I had no chance of grabbing that at all but if I press F8 and pause the game we can go around and see he does indeed have the key so it is hanging off of him a little bit you're not gonna see it so now we actually need to check that we can actually grab key that's the one one thing I'm cautious about is if we're looking through here, is our line trace going to stop because it's trying to get through it to get the key if it's behind it? If so, we'll either have to disable the jail door or rotate the jail so you have to grab it from this side. But for now, we need to make sure the guard walks in far enough. Because at the moment, he's walking in and stopping around here, which is not enough room for you to get it. We need him to walk a lot closer. So what I'm actually going to do is modify my AI movement where the guard is walking. So I'll go into my AI tasks, move to patrol point, and instead of 200 i'm actually just going to change it to something like 50 so he has to get really close to that patrol point and in the future we will make it so these ai patrol points actually stop the guard so we can like look in the jail cell look in a different one and then walk away it gives him some delay time and now if i press p i'll be teleport jail and where the guard is where is he uh, he's coming into the other jail and now he's going the other way now he's coming in so hopefully we should be able to grab the key if we're quick enough no we can't get the key at all so i do think the jail door is stopping us. So in order for us to test this a bit more accurately, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come and grab this gel here. I'm just going to give it a tag called testing cell. It doesn't really matter what it is. And I'm going to jump to my key press where I actually teleport the player into jail. And 
instead of getting a random actor with an interface, instead what I'm going to do is simply call get all actors with tag and I'm going to put our tag into it. I'm going to get the first one and that's the one I'm going to use because then we can ensure we always go to the same jail. And then first thing I'm going to try just to make sure it's not the door is I'm actually going to rotate the jail sideways. So we'll be pointing outside of the jail and hopefully be able to grab the key. But let's press the P key and the guard should be almost coming straight in. So now you can see we've gotten on. Oh, we did see an interaction though. So we are getting closer. It does appear that we have to do it through the bars, which isn't fantastic, but it is something we can improve upon. Now it appears we do have to do it through the bars, which is slightly annoying. I'd rather the bars just not be there to be fair. So what I'm going to do is jump into the jail cell and depending on how your interaction works will kind of depend how you go about this. But what I'm going to do is make sure my cell door is blocking the trace response of visibility for narrative interaction that uses the trace response visibility. Check what your interaction uses and then make sure on your cell, we can hit custom for a moment. I'm actually going to tell it to ignore the trace response visibility, which now means that the interaction trace for this one will just go straight through these bars, but the door will block it correctly. And because we've modified the door in the previous episode, it's one big. So hopefully our trace response should just go straight through this now. Another thing I'm going to do is it is quite hard while the guard's not stopping to actually get the heat. So what I'm going to do is go to my BP jail key here, and I'm actually just going to make this bot a lot bigger. Now the collision on this box is currently set to overlap everything but block it. I don't think we need that. It seems a bit overkill. So on the key, I'm going to come and change the collision type to no collision. Then I'm going to change it to custom. I'm going to set the collision enable to query only, so we can only query it. I'll tick ignore for everything except the visibility trace response, and I'll also come and set it to world dynamic. So what we've basically done now is, is we say ignore every type of collision, only block trace responses for the visibility channel. The type of object is a world dynamic, so that just means we're spawning it in dynamically, which we are, and then we're only accepting query responses. So this is now really efficient in the collision area. So now if we teleport to jail and as the guard walks in with a bigger key, we should be able to go take jail key. Did we get it? We did. We can now unlock the jail door. How cool it's working. However, we do have a few glitches, so I can't actually get out at the moment because the jail door is rotated. So we've got a couple of ways we can get around this. We could modify our interaction system to turn from a single trace to a multi trace, meaning whether it hits something or not, it's going to keep going through it. Now that's okay, but nine times out of 10, if it hits something you want it to hit it, that's the, the end of it. So I don't feel comfortable doing that. The other option is we rotate the jail cells in such a way that you can still escape it, but you can still grab the key, which is a bit awkward because then we won't be able to plan it out how we want. So the route I'm thinking of going for is instead when we spawn the jail escape, we'll just disable the jail door so you can't interact with it at all. And then the line trace will go straight through it. Then we can pick the key up. And then at that point, we re-enable the jail door. That's what I'm thinking we'll do. So in our jail cell here, we need a way to get the interactable door here. We, at the moment, we're not casting to it at all in here. We're using an interface. So let's go and modify our interface for it. So I'm going to press Control P to open up the open asset. And I'm going to search for BPI jail cell. And this is our interface to control it. I'm going to add a new interface to it with the add button at the top. And I'll click function and I'll call it toggle interaction collision and I'm also going to add an input of a boolean called active and this is whether or not the jail cells interaction is active or disabled. So what I'm thinking is since we're adding it to this interface instead of simply returning the interactable we'll keep it all local to the jail cell so the jail cell will control deactivating itself activating itself doing whatever it needs everything else can just call that. Then we've got a single point of entry for what's changing the interactable if it needs to. So I'm going to come and add the toggle interaction collision here and then from here I'm going to add a branch at the beginning of the active here. So if it's active true then we want to grab the jail cell door and call activate and I'll also tick the reset just to make sure that anything that needs to reset resets. I'm going to drag it down here and I'll also call deactivate which will hopefully disable it. But let's try it like now. So I'm not sure whether we have to disable the actual collision on the door or it will pass through it because there's no interaction component on it. So we'll try it like this and if it doesn't work then we'll just disable the collision as well. But now all we need to do is come back to our escape technique, copy the jail cell and simply call toggle interaction collision and we'll keep it as false like so. We'll add a common, disable the interaction until we have the key. Now we don't currently have a way to enable the interaction again but we're just testing if the deactivation lets us grab the key in the first place. If it does then we can enable the interaction when we get the key. If this doesn't work then we can just disable the collision on the door and then go from there.
So we'll teleport to the jail. You can see we're in here. It's no longer interacting with the door, which is perfect, except the other doors. Then as the guard comes in, we can get the jail key. You can see if we go inside the jail, when the guard walks up, this is the door. We should be able to grab the key from him. So to make this easier before we do test it again, what I'm actually going to do is just copy this guard, holding alt and dragging him. And I'm actually just going to put him right in front of where we need to be. And I'm going to disable his patrol controller. So he'll still spawn a key with the way we've written it. But it means now we teleport to jail. We don't have to wait for him to come to us. We can just test it right there and then. There's no time frame for you to grab the key either. So now if we teleport to jail, we've got a guard right in front of us. But you can see we can successfully grab the jail key. Unless we get up too close, then it seems to stop it. So I'm wondering if the collision is intersecting with it. So if I press the F8 key to debug out, let's click the guard here, click the key, and then we'll click the box that actually triggers it. And I'll search for hidden in game and I'll untick it like that. So you can see the guard, you can see the actual collision collision for the key is intersecting with it so if we temporarily change the size to something like two so we half the size can we still interact with it no so we can no longer interact with it inside here so it does look like we'll have to disable the collision trace on the door so we can go through it as you can see we can't do it the only way we were managing to do it was when it was inside the actual gate so that's not perfect so if we come back to our bp jail cell we'll grab the cell door here so realistically there isn't an easy way where we can keep the this cell door from blocking everything but to ignore trace visibility because we kind of need it to block everything but ignore the tracing which is not something ordinary but it works perfect for our current situation so what i'm actually going to do is create our own preset now this is a really good way of keeping all your collision presets so you haven't got a bunch of custom ones that work completely differently i'm going to come to project settings and i'm going to come down to collision here you can see under presets here i'm going to open it up and we have all the existing ones here so I'm going to come and tick new up here like so. I'm going to call it block all no query. And I'll make sure I set the collision enabled to collision enabled. So it does just stop the player from walking. And I'll make sure I tick block for everything except visibility and camera. And then I'll click accept. Which means in here, we can now see our new version. So we can now see it's block all no query. If I come back and click off and click back on, refresh the lists. You can see in the query, you can see in the collision presets, we now have our new version, which sets it up exactly how we need. Which means from the query door, we can now drag off and do set collision profile name and we'll connect it up here so if we're activating it then we will set it to block all if we're deactivating it however then in this case all we need to do is set it to our new version of block all no query like so and we can hit compile and save so hopefully now this time if we test it we'll be able to see straight through the jail door and interact with the key there should be nothing intersecting with us on the jail cell now so you'll see now if we press p to go into jail we can see you can activate the jail key perfectly just like that even inside here if we look off to the side we can still interact with other ones but we can take the key if i press it it now disappears the key is gone and then that's where we need to actually enable the jail cell so we can now escape out of it again so where we spawn the actor here and we attach it to the component then we can bind to the key and say once we've picked it up turn the jail cell's door back on so i have also discovered something we're doing here we're looping over every character and giving them a key but then for every character we're deactivating the jail we don't need to do that that's quite inefficient i'm actually going to disconnect these two and put them down here and i'm actually going to connect these to the uncompleted so it goes over all the characters and spawns the keys then only once it locks the jail and disables the interaction that's much more efficient so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag off our key here and i'm actually going to get to the interactable component here which is the one we created and then from here i'm going to assign an event to on interacted here so this will tell us once we've interacted with the object so as soon as we've interacted with it what do we want to do well the first thing we want to do is enable the interaction again i'm going to come and copy this disable here and just paste it afterwards like so and then we can tick it active so we will say enable the interaction we now have a key so as soon as we grab the key it will now enable the jail cell which is perfect we do still have a lot of rogue keys roaming around though and i don't think that's a real good thing to have so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to come and copy this for each loop and this get all guards and i'm going to come and paste it after we've enabled it here and you might be thinking isn't it bad to go over it twice and in some cases yes it's bad to go over it twice however we're actually being very performant here because once we run this chunk of code here the player could take five hours to get out of jail and that means you'll be storing these guards in memory for five hours we don't need to store them in memory we only need to get them once the player has actually gotten the key so for five hours we're now not storing that in memory and then we're only re-looping over it afterwards which is a lot more performant in the future when we do set up our 
jail framework, we will have easier ways to get the guards as well, so it'll be even better in the future. But now we're looping over all the guards again, we can drag off the array element, and we can get the interaction pick up just like we did above. Then, because we've spawned all the keys here, we just need to simply get the keys and then destroy them. So what I'm going to do is just drag off of here, and I will do get all actors of class, and we will find our jail key pick up. And because we've already picked up the one we want, we can now loop over it, and then on the keys we can just simply call destroy. And now that we've actually picked up the key, we can also, on completed, call destroy on this escape technique, because it has officially been complete. So let's try it now. So hopefully it should all plug in very nicely and work. So we should be able to steal the key from the door, should instantly allow us to unlock it, we can unlock it and then escape. In the future we will look at adding a proper jail framework, so we can easier get the guards, and then when we get the guards we can easily get their equipped items, so we don't have to specifically find the keys from everywhere. You can see we're in the jail, we can see the jail key, once we take it it says we can now interact with the door, and we can escape. There we go ladies and gentlemen, if we take a look at the other guard you can see his key has also disappeared, because there's no point in him having a key, we've finished the escape. Obviously if you want him to remain a key, so you can stock up on it for the future, then just make sure you don't delete the keys at the end. And there we go ladies and gentlemen, there is our first proper escape technique, where you have to escape from the jail cell. But there we go ladies and gentlemen, there is our first proper jail escape system. If you haven't done a basic one where you, the guards left the jail cell unlocked, we have a full proper, you must wait for the guard to come in, steal the key from him and walk away. So you can see if I teleport to a random jail, where are we? The guard is just walking down, so we can't escape from our jail, we can't get out, we basically just have to wait until the guard comes. We can't unlock the other one, we have to wait until he blesses us with his presence, he's coming in now. So you'll see, we can steal the jail key, we'll wait for him to escape, because obviously if we escape he'll see us. We can open it, and we can escape to freedom! There we go ladies and gentlemen, ignoring the guards outside. There is the jail key system. What do you think? How would you improve it? In future we're going to look at adding the jail framework, as I mentioned today, and we'll look at adding more jail escape techniques, because there's loads we can do. I've even modified the back of it, so we've got a much bigger room here, where we can hopefully add a trap door escape technique, which is one Skyrim uses. But there we go. My name is Decryption, and I will see you next time.